talk to me for a bit. Uh, so. Testing, uh, first uh, interview for addiction, um, chronic addiction. Interview, <laughs> it's like a job interview. Yeah, job interview for, <laughs> for addiction. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to our channel. My name's Sally Graham and this week I've got a fabulous uh, interview with Mr. Steve Oatway. This is a great peer support uh, message and we're bringing some of these to you on a regular basis. If you're in recovery yourself or perhaps you're a friend or a family member, we'd love you to hit subscribe. If you've got some topics you'd like us to chat about, let us know in the descriptions below and let's get into it. Okay, so I'm here with the uh, fabulous uh, Steve Oatway, junk artist of South Australia um, extraordinaire, and we're talking about addiction and recovery and just going to get personal and whatever, and just talking about peer support and what works for you. Yes. Good so, morning, Sally. How are you going? Yeah, welcome, Steve. Always good to catch up with you. Yes, been a while. So um, where do you want to start, mate? I think it's always good to start with how long you've been sober and clean. Yeah, how long you've been sober so and clean. So I just had to look that up. In fact, yeah. in two weeks' time, I would have been sober eight years and six months. Fantastic. Fantastic. So uh, looking forward to the... I try to work in six-month blocks. So if I get to that six yeah. months and then the next, and then in the back of my head, ten years is in my head, yeah. get to that, and then after that'll be the next ten years. Yeah. Yeah, That's so, the plan. so those sort of milestones sort of yeah. work for you? Achievable goals, achievable, achievable goals, goals that I can get to. Six month blocks are yeah. really, really uh, useful for me. And yeah. then the celebration, 12 month milestone, yeah. and then focus on the next year and step it that way. Yeah, awesome. Where did you get that from? Uh, just in, in it, this, this program that I'm on is tailor made. I think you have to have a tailor made program. Yeah. So for me, that's what works for me after looking at everything I've done and how I react at certain times. So yeah. it's, it's uh, tailor-made for Steve. And yeah. it's working so for eight and a half years. Isn't it, it is. Fantastic. That's yeah. a lot to celebrate. It's it very is. Good. Yes. Very good. And, um, oh, we could say, how, how did we meet, Steve? Ah, Marilyn Munro from memory. <laughs> uh, I drove through Birdwood and I went past this house on the corner. Happened to be yours. I didn't yeah. know you. I didn't know that. Yeah. A big picture of Marilyn Munro, huge red dress on, and I'm a big fan of Marilyn Munro. Yeah. I went past and I thought, oh, I got down to Lovell's Bakery. And I thought, oh, I'll get it on the way back. I was going down to Mum's and I thought, I'll get it the next day. And then something clicked in my head and I did a U-turn. I came back, walked in, I met you. Yeah. Um, I'd actually heard about you previously, but I didn't know it was you. So I'll explain that. I came in, I said, oh, how much is that Marilyn uh, Munro uh, painting in there? And you said, ah, oh, 15 bucks. And you had a lovely uh, studio there, um, yeah. Broad, Broadfront Studio Gallery. There was a fabulous uh, Jesus um, mixed media work on the wall that I asked if I could buy, but you said no. Yeah, not um, But I got Marilyn. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I had a look, you were painting at the time, you were doing some watercolours. I uh, went up and had a look at those and said, oh, you know, obviously you love art, and I do too. And Got talking, and then you gave me your black and black and white book, yeah. and I looked on the back of it, and bang! I had this light bulb moment. Someone, uh, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, had listened to you speak out at Clovercrest Church years ago. I said you must meet this lady, mm -hmm. and I said okay, but I never ever did until this moment in time, and I recognised the name Sally Graham, and I said I know you, I know who you are, I know your story, incredible story, mm -hmm. uh, and that's how we met. And we've been sort of friends and you've been counselling me since and um, sort of inspiration really with your story is just incredible. Mm -hmm. so, um, and we both have that um, art in common. So yes. what, do you, what, what are your thoughts around that maybe, Steve? You know, art and addiction and, um, you know, obviously I'm, a, I'm an addict myself as well and 20 years in recovery or something. I would have to look it up myself as well, I reckon. <laughs> I want to get to that point where you don't have to remember how yeah. long it is. It's just, you it's know. It's a bit like that now. Yeah. yeah. But things in so common. we have three things in common, spirituality, art and addiction. Yeah. So for me, if you just uh, gauge looking around from what you can see just off the camera there, art is a huge part of my life. I live and breathe it uh, 24 hours a day and it has been one of my biggest healers. Art mm. is a, a visual diary of 
where I'm at at a particular time. So if I'm doing crazy stuff like this uh, Corona machine behind me, exterminator yeah. machine, yeah. I'm in a good place, happy place, fun place. If I start doing paintings that are a little bit dark and uh, working with, um, you know, dark colours, I start to, I can step back and go, hang on, where's where's my mind at? So it's a really good gauge for me. Oh, okay. In, yeah. in art and it's soothing and it's escapism and imaginary mm -hmm. and just wonderful. Mm -hmm. Love it. So that's sort of like a, like a real thermometer for you. It's a real Very gauge much. for you to help you know where you're at and, and, and yeah. So maybe well, can you... Yeah. Talk to us a bit about what works for you then, Steve, in those times when perhaps you do find yourself getting a bit dark or a bit whatever. What are the things that perhaps you've found that are helpful for you um, that maybe might... So it'll be others? a trigger. So if I'm using dark colours or making sort mm. of a, a, an angry sculpture, that, that's my first sign of a visual that, hang on, I'm not flowing here. So then I'll, I'll go and reflect on where I'm at with that and why I might be feeling like this or I could be angry. Mm -hmm. So I'll make an angry piece of art or, you know, I'll go and throw paint at things and I'll get that anger out. Uh, so what I do then is uh, just reflect and see why am I feeling like that. I'll journal. I journal every day. That's another yeah. healing tool that I have. Yeah. Um, and then I'll, I'll pinpoint what the issue is and then I'll, I'll uh, once I identify then I can uh, go about making nicer art and mm. calming myself down. I might need a bit of meditation or, you know, yeah. go for a walk, punch the boxing bag. Um, yeah. A really good um, gauge of what I need to do at that time. Yeah. yeah. And reflection, reflection, really. Yes. Yeah. So you mentioned um, the three things we have, our addiction, tendencies, um, art and spirituality. Yes. Yeah, so how, is, how does that look for you? Well, I should probably be, like yourself, I probably should be dead uh, yeah. many times over. However, I think my my power up there has uh, other plans for, for me. And it could well be this, it could well be the purpose to, to help others, yes. certainly. But uh, I've lived a fairly dangerous times in my life. Um, so I know... I know there's a God up there, and when I looked, uh, I knew that we were going to do this. I was looking at some of my art and the Jesus paintings I've done, and there's a lot mm. of biblical stuff I've done. Mm. And I also have a lot of uh, op shop figurines of uh, biblical items, you know. Uh, yes. There's one behind me there, uh, uh, Jesus on standing next to Bart Simpson on my machine. Um, crosses, you know, I wear a cross to protect me. Oh, yeah. Hang on. I'm going to um, point to him. <laughs> oh, no, I can't. Oh, there we are. Yep. Yeah. There he's there. Next there he to is. Bart. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this spirituality has been with me all the time. But I but I struggle because I go, I seem to have one foot in each camp, the devil and Jesus. So I'm always feeling torn uh, prior to getting straight. I was really torn in there, you know, and I had some demonic forces uh, at some point attacking me. And I was uh, in a really bad space one time. It was like a, a demonic force come in and it was squeezing me and I was howling like and moaning like a wolf, for wow. goodness sake. Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, they say when you're at your weakest, the demonic will come in and, and try and mm. possess you, I guess. But yeah. and after that, I thought I might have a, a treatment, which is called an exorcism. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I looked it up and it could be done. But I, I you know, I, at that time, I didn't, I provoked the spirit because I was doing a Ouija board. Uh, oh, another yeah. with a white witch yeah. and that brought in all this bad stuff and I was really drunk and stoned and off my face so yeah. it attacked me and it was very scary so that's the mm. devil in my mind they both equal power but because uh, the devil used to be an angel and uh, you yeah. know so yeah. I, I've torn uh, prior to getting straight but now I'm okay yeah mostly but it still sometimes pops into my yeah. head said come on have one have one drink Steve you'll be right mate yeah. Come with me, you know, he's, he's like that. Come with yeah, me, enticing yeah. me. Yeah. So, yeah. Away. Exactly. Eight years of. <laughs> yeah, eight years of take a walk, no take fence. a hike. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, um, if we boiled it down, let's say the early days, uh, what were the things, you know, you were saying then about that sort of that wrestle, you know, in the early days and. 
even the spiritual aspect of it but even aside from that what were the things that you know what was the thing that that sort of turned you around initially uh to get straight just, yeah, just yeah, talking yeah yeah in the beginning eight years ago in fact i wasn't in a good space again yeah uh, i had those moments i was living in a church eight miles from here called Pontheri in a church yeah. living in a church that was my dream yeah um and for some reason i was planning my suicide actually Wow. I uh, moved to Manham to get away from the, the elements and the crowds yeah. and I thought, well, Manham has a gun club. I can join the gun club, get myself a gun. Uh, there was an old relic building uh, in the block next to me, just up from me, and I thought I'll sit on there, I'll get my video camera as we are, and I'll shoot myself in the head. Wow. Yeah. That, that was a turning point then. I thought, mm. wow, that's where did that come from? And I, I didn't do that, obviously. Mm. Um, so at that point there, I thought, I've really got to do something. And one morning, it wasn't even planned. I woke up eight and a half years ago, 20th of Feb, 2012. And I thought, one more try. I've got tattoo try on my, on my body, on my neck. Uh, one more try. Come from nowhere, I wasn't planning it. I thought, one more try, or that's gonna be what's gonna happen to me. Because I was just sick of the, the pain and the frustration of living with addiction, you know, and not being able to control it, I was just angry. Mm. Um, one more try, one minute at a time, one hour at a time, and uh, here we are, mm -hmm. eight and a half years later. Eight and a half years later. So that was, yeah. Wow, yeah. That, that's, yeah, you got me there. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and the reason I was going to video my own death was to try and help other people don't don't do what I'm don't about do to this. do because it's, yeah. there's help out there now, a lot more help now than there was back then, your time and mine. Definitely. You know? and, and it's well, it's more acceptable that you don't have to hide from addiction, you can put it out there and people will help you yes. if you're looking for it. So, yeah, um, exactly, exactly. You know, but it's a pretty dramatic way to teach someone a lesson not to do what I do yeah. and uh, shoot yeah. yourself in the head. So. And I'm then, glad I didn't. Amen. I'm glad you didn't too. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but certainly addiction can take us down those really extreme paths, doesn't Ooh, it? And, yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Because back in the day, I to remind myself when I was in the throes of addiction, I had um, some tattoos put on my arm to remind me of things. So what I used to do is I caused chaos. Oh, yes. Right. And then yes. someone said, why have you got soak on your arm? Oh. <laughs> Being an alcoholic, I've got soak the other way around. I never knew that. Yeah. So it caused chaos, right? And then after that, yeah. I was asked for honesty. So I've got honesty. Uh, sorry, asked for redemption. Sorry. Yeah, beautiful. Redemption. And then I would ask for honesty and have integrity. That, that was my yes. pattern. Yes. So I stopped the chaos and I stopped the soak. Yeah. Um, the other stuff I tried to fix through the 12 steps of AA as well, yes. um, you know, about redemption and um, and giving back. Yeah. So that's sort of how I lived Yeah. back then. So, so writing those, I've got tattoos as well. My tattoos are sort of um, a bit, perhaps a bit similar. They're, they're moments for me that remind me. There's something, I, I, want to, I haven't found the word as to what they're about. Okay, yep. What, what, what about you? You said you've got try there. And, well, try, yeah. Always and, try, you know. Never With addiction, uh, anything. Never never stop yeah, trying to, yeah. to quit. No matter how many times you fail, just try. Try, try, try. Exactly. And you're only six minutes from the miracle. So you don't know when that's coming. Yes. Mine was 2012. Yeah. So if you keep trying, I tried, I don't know how many times and how many programs and almost quit I almost quit mm. but i didn't i tried one more time bang there it is yeah amen. So. amen and also i have matthew uh 25 35 36 um yeah. prayer on my arm so yeah. that's how i try and live now you know yeah. if you're hungry give somebody food if they're in jail visit them if they're thirsty give them yeah. water yeah. um beautiful and i try and i try and try and live by that now as opposed to chaos yeah, that's good. I might put a, I'll put a link in the description down below for people um, with that scripture. Yes, it, just yes. so that people can look it up for themselves the fabulous, later or check uh, it out or whatever. Yeah, fabulous scripture. Yeah, that keeps yeah, me, um, you know, giving back as much as I possibly can. Yeah, after taking so much. Um, yeah. And, you know,
So I think that's a good, um, yeah, I think that whole concept of giving back is something that's really um, important in recovery as well. So that's interesting, yeah. Well, when, when you come uh, last year, I think it was, and you said to me, Steve, because I, was, I was, wasn't sure what I wanted to, to do in the next couple of years, and you said, do a vision board. Yeah. Do a vision board, Steve. So I did that, and out of that came, I wanted to do mission work. I had a, I'd had a calling to go to Africa, but I felt that it was a little bit dangerous. I wasn't quite ready for that. I needed a lead into it. So through the vision board came out, mission. What mission can I do? Mm. that I've been called to do. And I ended up going to um, Cows for Cambodia with Cosy. That's right, yes. And uh, that was just incredible, you know, and it's life-changing. So I'm much uh, looking forward to, to getting to Africa uh, at some point. I was planning this year with Angels of East Africa um, group. Yeah, yeah. Um, you've met Sam Childers. He's, he yes, runs that, yeah, the machine yeah. gun preacher. Yeah. He runs two missions a year to Africa in Sudan. So it was July and December. I was planning December this year, but of course Corona has uh, messed that up. Changing. So yeah. hopefully I'm still able to do yeah. some planning for next year. Or, and if I don't do that one, then I'll, I'll definitely do something that's um, you know, worthwhile. So, mm. Mm. so if you had someone, um, you know, like just new, new in recovery, what do you? What would be your sort of go-to things? This is advice for them. You know, like. Do what? What do they do? First three things is to first three things to do is don't pick up that first drink. Even when you start to get the thought in your head, yeah. you not pick up that first drink. That does all the damage. Yeah, completely yeah. does the damage. Um, I would because because every treatment plan is tailored. I think for the individual, they have to go and seek everything that they can find. I mean, AA is the the most successful uh, program worldwide. Mm. Mm. So the most success rate. Yeah. I also did AA. So look at all your options that you have now. Online, there's heaps of information. Yeah. Wisdom and knowledge is what I offer. Wisdom, yeah. knowledge. Find out everything you can, and then you go to a professional if you want to, and tailor it yeah, to good. suit your individual yeah. Yeah. circumstances. Mm. Um, so yeah, knowledge and wisdom would be my advice. Mm. Very good. Well, thanks for sharing with us, Dave. I don't know if there's any last thoughts or something deeply profound. <laughs> You've already said deeply profound stuff. <laughs> um, I think I've pretty much covered everything on there. It, it's just, you know, it's just been, been in been recovery. It's just, I can remember things. I don't have the blackouts anymore. My family has accepted me back into the fold because yeah, I was completely yeah. excluded. Restoration. Uh, for, for good reason, you know, good reason. I was an arsehole. Yeah. Um, so my family's back now and I do work in the community. Mm. And I want to go and do mission work. So life in sobriety is wonderful Yeah. if you get there. And, and I pray, I'll pray that you get there and work hard. By no means is this easy. I find it bloody hard. I remember, Sally, you said to me that you've been delivered from addiction. Mm. I haven't. <clears throat> I wish I was, but I haven't. Mm. I've been arrested by it. Uh, yes. Ex friends of mine have said you're holding your breath. Well, I used to say that. I used to believe that, but now it's just maintenance, just maintaining yeah, your sobriety. You know, staying away from the crowds that you used to knock around with. Um, mm. So just maintaining it. Now I'm not holding my breath anymore. Yeah. So I yeah. would say that life in sobriety, once you get through your the dark days, the hard days, um, life is good. Yeah, that's good. Precious day. Thank you. Oh, and thank you to Sally too. She's helped me a lot in the last um, three years, actually. So keep me keep me in my maintenance program. Uh, Sally has yeah. kept me very uh, on track with our yeah. talks and our vision boards and suggestions of how I can um, yeah. keep straight too. So thank you, Sally. Bless you, mate. Bless you. <laughs>